We'll now talk about phase shift, which has a fancy name, but is just the horizontal equivalent of vertical shifting. It's moving the graph left or right. So here's a sinusoidal function. We've seen that A controls the amplitude. We've seen that D controls the vertical shift. We've seen that B controls the period. So that should leave C to control the horizontal shift, which it certainly does. As I adjust C, you'll see it move horizontally. I'm afraid I told you a little fib, though, in an earlier video. In an earlier video, I said that these four parameters don't interact that A controls one thing and B controls a second thing, C a third thing, D a fourth thing. And here's where I have to issue a retraction because the horizontal shift is not only controlled by C, the horizontal shift is also controlled by B. So let's say we have a sinusoidal function. This sinusoidal function either looks like a sine or it looks like a cosine, except that this A stretches it or squishes it, and this B messes with its period, it pulls it out or squishes it together. And this D adjusts its vertical location. It moves it up or it moves it down. And this C and this B together are going to adjust its horizontal position. So the horizontal shift which is also called the phase shift, is unfortunately not given by C. That would be the nice thing. I mean, D gives you the vertical shift, but, but the horizontal shift is trickier. It's C divided by B. And if you've taken college algebra and you've seen horizontal shifting, you can sort of understand why that is. Because our sort of, our default function here, you can think of starting with the sine of bx, and then we replace x with x minus c over b, and this is a horizontal shift of c over b. If you haven't taken college algebra, or you did take it, but it was years ago, and this is all Greek to you, then you don't have to worry about it. This C over B is the take home message of the video. Or rather, it's one of the two take home messages of the video. Because, I mean, if we talk about moving something horizontally, it can go in one of two directions, right? It can go to the left or it can go to the right. So which direction is this horizontal shift? Well, 
if C is positive, it goes to the right. And if C is negative, it goes to the left. But you have to be really careful with this because the way sinusoidal functions are defined in the textbook, there's built-in subtraction. So if you see, for example, something like this, two times the sine of five X minus seven plus three, Well, the shift is seven over five units. And it's seven five over five units to the right. It would be easy to make a mistake here. It would be easy to see this negative sign and think, okay, we have a negative thing, something's less than zero, so you're shifting to the left. But we are subtracting a positive number here. We are subtracting positive seven, so it's to the right. Conversely, If we had something like this, the shift is three over two units, three divided by two, and the shift is to the left. And again, it would be easy to make a mistake. It would be easy to say, well, this is positive, Positive means we're going right. But when we talk about sinusoidal functions, you see we've got this negative sign here. Adding three is the same as subtracting negative three. So we've got a, um, a negative number here. And I should, I guess, to be strictly accurate, the textbook doesn't do this, but to be strictly accurate, I guess we really should have that in absolute value. The fact that we can think of this three as minus negative three. Uh, we don't need to worry about that here. We just take this number and we take this number and we divide them. But we do have to worry about it when we're determining which direction the horizontal shift is in.